This Alina girl seems oddly over-enthusiastic about everything, in spite of the difficulties she encountered before we found her. To say that it has been a long time since I last had the opportunity to talk to someone like that would be a great understatement. Sadly, her cheerful demeanor is not enough to dispel the shadows that have followed me wherever I go since Galas's death, nor does it do anything to keep me from remembering Malin and his habit of trying to make the most fun of any situation. For somebody who has lived for so long, it's hard to see the world in the same light as young people do. Nowadays, I can barely remember those times. Blithe disregard for responsibility. My romantic escapades and the misguided notion that we had all the time of the world for ourselves. Sometimes I wish I could get rid of this burden. Before dying, my master told me that the true power of the Ruby of Fire would become crucial for the fate of our world, and that I must make sure it's never misused by anyone again. It never occurred to me that her words could turn out to be more than a pain-induced delusion. Episode 2, Scenario 3, Unrest in Ralphin, Revelations. Finally, the walls of Ralphin. It's a pity it's too dark to see the glory of the capital city. I have been here before. Now, let's move. Halt! Who goes there? I'm a humble messenger from the south small village of Southwood in the Hart Forest. We came here to meet with the Grand Council. You and who else? Seize the traitor! Traitor? Who? Exactly what in the world is going on here? You, Perry, are accused of betraying the alliance of the peoples of the far north, leading an elvish faction found to be collaborating with our enemies in times of war, and disclosing vital tactical information which jeopardizes the safety of the Aragwife country and our allies. Certainly, this must be some kind of misunderstanding. I would never shift my allegiances against what's best for the free civilizations of Erdia. Imprisoning her will not be necessary. Allow her to come to the Grand Council. But my lord... The rest of the uh, council gradually walk down the road. A trial won't be required either. She's been framed by the enemy. Elinia, we have been eagerly awaiting your return. It's been a long time. Lord Arnesius, it's good to see you again. Something terrible has happened. Yes, yes. Bailin has told us everything, and there's more you need to know as well. Come with us. My lord, I... our messengers were promised an audience with the council as well. That will have to wait while we discuss some more matters. But since you have come from so far protecting her, you may also come and listen. Very well, my lord. We'd like to start by apologizing for our actions. Or, more accurately, our lack thereof. If we understood the importance of your mission to Zothanol, We'd have sent a whole fleet with you, and Galas' demise could have surely been avoided. I don't think that would have made a great difference. The storm that caught us was a trap set up by our enemies. As soon as we got word of your plan to assault the Wesmai Hive on your own, we sought a platoon in your aid, but their path was obstructed by those Shaxal creatures who took over the Bay of Glamdral to the southwest. By the time the soldiers arrived, it was already too late. Not only did we not find you or the Lich Malkeshar, but the planes had completely disappeared. But... disappeared? Everything vanished at the center of the explosion from which you escaped. The hive, the rocks, the clouds... Everything had completely disappeared, according to the reports we got. 
The area surrounding the massive crater turned into a vast ashy desert, devoid of any traces of life, artificial or otherwise. They also said the air itself had turned thin, as in the tallest peaks of the mountains. We could only assume you had also been caught in the explosion and were destroyed along with the necromancer. With the ongoing war, we couldn't spend much time or resources in searching for you, so we decided to seek assistance from a seer who could tell us what happened and why. That's when we found Valen, who has been of great help to us this past year. Hold on. That isn't possible. A year? But it has been... It's been less than a month. For you, my lady, time only continued to flow after the point you reappeared in our country's borders. But for us, time has gone by as usual. It's been a little more than a year since the destruction of Wesmere. We suspect you were at the very centre of the explosion, which may have caused an anomaly that brought you forward in time. Actually, it may be my own fault. I used a teleportation spell I had just learned, without mastering it first. Just as I felt as though my very existence had come to an end. But the entire place vanishing doesn't make sense. How could that happen? There are many things we still haven't learned about our enemies that are perhaps essential for putting an end to this war. Where's Kiara and Horo? We sent them to you after securing the Chaos Outpost in Westmere. I fear we have never heard those names before. Assuming they stumbled upon the same class and enemy, number of enemies as our men did, it's very likely they didn't make it. If you can provide me with more information, I may be able to find out what happened to them, but it will take time. While Velen was trying to determine your whereabouts, new riots took place between the elves of the lands to the east. There are rumours of a certain rose-haired fairy allying herself with the leaders of the Chaos Empire, which is why you and your people have become rather unpopular amongst our peers. The elves are once again divided and fighting their own kinsmen on the eastern border of our country, but one of the factions is clearly at an advantage thanks to their alliance with the Empire. We suspect they may be planning to invade us next, taking advantage of the tight situation on the southern borders. Furthermore, it is said a great explosion took place in Glandrol a few days ago. We haven't received any confirmation yet, but we fear it's of a similar nature to the one that destroyed Wesmere. If that's true, then we have just lost our largest western garrison. I see. It's of utmost importance that the situation in the East is cleared up. The friendly elvish faction has asked us for aid. But as it is now, we are unable to gather the complete council to come to an agreement. We currently don't have many men to spare, so it has been suggested that you could lead a militia in order to assist them, and hopefully discover the identity of this mysterious impersonator. I think I've had enough experience with leading militiamen in the forests for my liking, and I highly doubt they could stand a chance against those demons and biomechanical creatures. Eh? It was never our intention to send you alone with barely trained fighters. Amongst your messengers was one of Melkashar's very own disciples, a woman by the name of Zainara. She is willing to assist by leading a new undead horde against our enemies for you. If you agree to help us, we will also make sure to keep you informed of any important events from the main battlefront, sending you messages through Valen. You will also be able to communicate with us this way. There's a very important journal we retrieved from the Chaos Capital, and Malkeshar told me before his destruction that he passed it to Kiara, the desert elf, in case none of us would make it back from the hive. It is my hope that she and Horo are still alive somewhere, or that at the very least they passed the journal to another trustworthy person. I will agree to lead the expedition on the condition that you also do your best to locate it. That's a fair deal, although I would first like to know what this journal contains that makes it such a great priority for you, over your reputation and people. Malkeshar didn't get a chance to talk with me about the contents of the journal, besides the location of the hive. 
where the heart of Yeknogoth was supposedly stored. Before his destruction, he referred to a greater cause, one that transcends the fate of Erdia. The feeling that it's about something he read in it. The journal was written by the Chaos Emperor himself, so the information within should be accurate and relevant for our purposes. That is, assuming the heart of the colossal creature we destroyed in Wesbia was truly Yechnogoth's. I'll do whatever it takes to find out about that journal, my lady. Very well then, tomorrow we'll provide you with further instructions for your mission. We'll talk with the messengers from Southwood now. Alright, scenario over. And so we left for the eastern marches, with a renewed and clear purpose. Surprisingly enough, Durfan and some of the other hunters from the Hard Forest agreed to participate in our expedition. Alina offered her help as well, providing us with a safe route to follow, incidentally crossing through her village. We proceeded as swiftly as we could, hoping for an uneventful journey. Given the nature of our mission, Expending our energy before reaching the elves could prove disastrous later on. And with that chunk of voice acting past, we are now going to move on to episode 2, scenario 4, Shifting Allegiances. And that's where this little video ends. <laughs>